Hey guys, this is Miles and welcome back to the Electric Bike Lab. Today's video is going to be the first of a four part series that's going to show you exactly how to build a lithium battery on your own. So in this video, we're going to be taking these cells, making them into something that's useful, that's going to be powering an electric skateboard. So be sure to stick around until the end and you'll see exactly how this thing goes together. For this video series, we're gonna be mainly discussing lithium ion batteries. Now, lithium ion batteries are probably the most popular because they're very energy dense, which means for a given range required out of a battery, lithium ion is the smallest battery that can be built. There are other types like lithium iron phosphate, lithium titanate, lithium polymer, but for our discussion, it will be on cylindrical lithium ion cells. There are two main variants for cylindrical lithium ion cells, we have the 18650, which is an 18 millimeter diameter, 65 millimeter length, and we have the 2170, which is a 21 millimeter diameter, six, or 70 millimeter length. 2170s have about 50% more capacity of a cell, which, as you can imagine, has really made them much more popular. These peak at about 3.5 amp hours, and these ones peak at about 5 amp hours currently. These are the cells that we're going to be using for this build. These are Samsung 40T 21700 cells with a capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours, discharge of 35 amps continuous, and we are going to have to run them in series. So here's a picture of four cells in series. We're going to need 10 cells in order to get our 36 volt. You can do the same calculation to get 48 volts or even 52 volts, 60 volts, and 72. It's 3.7 volts times the amount of cells that you have in series. Now, of course, they don't have to look like this. Uh, you can spot weld them together just like this, but in order to do that, you're going to need a spot welder. Here's a couple looks at some spot welders. Amazon has plenty. Uh, you can also get one from Flipski. This one works really well, or if you wanna go all out, you can get a K-Weld. Uh, we have one of these as well, and they are a beast. So where do you get the cells? Uh, a couple of sources, JAG35, battery hookup, battery clearing house. We have some at affordable e-bikes, 18650 battery store, lithium ion wholesale are all my go-to places. You are also going to need some cell holders, nickel strip, BMS, soldering flux, Kapton tape, multimeter. These are all going to be necessary tools. So let's get this pack together. We're going to test, make sure the voltage for every cell is even, and then we're going to start spot welding a strip between all of our cells to branch our series connections. On one side of the pack, we'll have our negative terminal. And on the other side, we'll have our positive. And on the bottom, all of the cells will connect uh, all with series connections. This nickel is 0.2 by 10 millimeter pure nickel strip. So it can carry quite a bit of current. And on the end terminals, we are doubling up using two layers, first spot welding them together and then spot welding them onto the terminals. From there we'll put some capped on tape which is a thermally protective and electrostatically protective uh, film. Uh, it can get very hot without melting. We'll wrap that all around the pack. That way if we drop solder or something on the tape it's not going to go through and then we're going to start tinning our connections for our balance leads on our BMS. Our BMS is going to protect the battery uh, in case anything uh, goes over voltage, under voltage, over current. The BMS is kind of like a smart uh, circuit breaker. So we'll glue the BMS into place and then we will solder on first the negative of our BMS to our negative terminal of the battery. and then we'll begin to get our balance leads in place. So first starting with the negative and after every lead gets in place, we're going to tape it down, make sure it doesn't move. So this BMS, we want to bring the lead wires back like a ribbon so that none of the wires are crossing over one another. This is for safety. You don't want the wires to cross and rub and then the friction to wear through. So now doing our first balance lead, taping it down, and gluing the wire down so it doesn't move. The second one, you can see after every wire is uh, soldered in place, we tape it down and glue it down, make sure that nothing can move, uh, add a layer of capped on anytime that there's a wire crossing. And you really want this to be a neat process. Uh, try and make it look 
neat, but also uh, the look isn't just aesthetics. It's also safety. You want to make sure that uh, these wires are not crisscrossing and rubbing and, and messy. And uh, you also want to make sure that you get them in the right place. So coming to the end, we're going to put our positive balance lead on our positive terminal. And now you can see all of the balance leads are in the correct place. So from here, what we'll do is add capped on tape um, to where we soldered so that everything is protected. We'll glue our thermal probe so that it touches on the cells. And we'll see if the battery is working. And it is. So now we'll tape on some of this fish paper, which is a nice thick paper. We'll protect uh, those wires. And we're going to run our thicker wires on top. So this is going to be our charge wire using an XT30 connection. 30 means 30 amps is what it is capable of delivering. So I like to plant our connectors in a vise, uh, place the wire in, and then solder them into place, put some heat shrink over top, and then use a torch to shrink the heat shrink. We use a three to one marine shrink, which has some adhesive glue inside, which will also help to seal those connections, make sure no air can come in and oxidize. This is a common port BMS, so there's only one connection on the BMS that's going to use both our charge and our discharge wires. So you can see that we've spliced it. Now we're running our positive charge wire across the fish paper, measuring that distance. And now we're going to run our XT60 discharge connection. We'll extend our negative lead wire, use some heat shrink, uh, some solder first, heat shrink over top of it. And once we have that all shrinked up, what we're going to do is get our torch on it, get that heat shrink shrunk up, and then we'll place our, neg or our positive lead wire on our positive terminal, solder it down. This is going to, going to be a thicker cable, in this case 14 gauge, and we'll tape down our negative and these are getting ready to have our connection put on them. So again, we're going to get out our vise. We're going to clamp our XT60 into the vise. And we're going to solder it in place. Make sure that we ran our heat shrink before soldering the connectors on. And then using our torch to uh, heat up the heat shrink. This is an appropriate length. So now we're going to tape everything up. And then we're going to run some PVC shrink over top of the entire battery pack. So we make sure that we have the right size of heat shrink, the right length, place it over top, make a little slit for our charge wire if needed. And then we're going to use a heat gun to shrink our heat shrink over top. And at this point, we are basically done our battery. Uh, we're going to make sure that our enclosure has optimal padding and we'll seal up our ends so that water cannot penetrate. But otherwise, this battery pack is pretty much good to go. We'll do some testing, of course. Here's a look at how to make a battery pack. Well guys, there you have it. We went from some cells to a working battery that's able to power an electric skateboard. So it really can be as easy as that. Now remember, this is the first in a four part series. Our next video, we're gonna be doing a down tube battery for an e-bike. So make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.